Uh, back to another album review. Today's review is on Far Beyond Driven from Pantera. It's the seventh studio album from Pantera. It's the third of their albums to be produced by Terry D, who also mixed and engineered the album with the help of Vinnie Paul. Pantera themselves were co-producers and handled the arrangements, and Ted Jensen did the, did the mastering. The album was recorded in 93, but I'm not sure exactly where it was recorded. If anyone knows, be sure to tell me in the comments. Anyways, the album was, re was released on March 22nd, 94, under East West Records. It's a record label that's owned by Warner Music Group, but it's based over in London. The album is primarily centered around groove metal, with some elements of thrash metal once again. But doing my research, I read that this was uh, the first Pantera album where Daryl Abbott was credited as Dimebag Daryl. And he actually changed his name, uh, his uh, nickname, after a vulgar display of power was released. Another thing I read is that the cover was originally going to feature a drill going to someone's anus. East West Records rejected it because they believed that it would hurt sales and it would be rejected by stores such as Target and Walmart. Instead, they decided to go with this cover, which has a drill going to someone's skull. Now, East West, uh, well, they found this cover to be acceptable and that's how it came to be. The original cover did get made and can be viewed online. All you have to do is look up Far Beyond Driven original cover on Google, and you'll be able to find it. Obviously, I'm not allowed to show it because YouTube will take this video down if I, if I actually showed it. However, I am allowed to show the, uh, the cover that actually made it onto the album. When doing my research, I read that Phil Anselmo was actually injured around, uh, around the time when the album was released. And he ended up with two ruptured discs in his back. And had suffered from chronic pain due to degenerative disc disease. As a result, he started drinking heavily while, uh, while taking a lot of painkillers and muscle relaxants. He went as far as to take heroin and try and numb the pain. This would become a problem later on, but we'll get back to that next week. Anyways, let's talk about the songs. Some starts with Strength Beyond Strength. The song is in the realm of thrash metal. You'll know this if you actually listen to the album. I think this is an awesome song and starts the album off quite well. The next song is Becoming. This is actually the fourth and final single from this album. And the single was released in 94. Uh, however, I don't know the exact date it was released. Phil and Samuel said that the song was about how Pantera had reached their pinnacle and become one of the, and one of the most popular metal bands in the world. I'd also like to add, this is the second shortest song on the album at 3 minutes and 5 seconds long. Up next is 5 Minutes Alone. This is the third single from this album, and the single was released in 94. I read that Vinnie Paul said that the song is about when Pantera are opening for Megadeth, and then there was one guy who kept giving them the finger during the performance. And Pantera stopped the show, and 10 other guys kicked the other guy's ass. You know, the guy's dad called the manager and wanted to speak with Phil personally for five minutes. I think the song is really awesome and the story behind it is very interesting. There's also a music video that was made for the song and I'll post a link to it in the description. He followed up with I'm Broken. So that's the first single from the album and the single was released on, uh, on March 14th, 94. Rather, the song was about the back pain that Phil and Selma was going through at the time. The music video was made for the song, and there's going to be a link to it in the description. The video was featured on Beavis and Butthead, and what's, and what's funny is that Beavis and Butthead, uh, you know, they love Pantera so much that Butthead turned the volume up all the way on the TV. Only it's funnier when the two of them decide to get closer to the TV. I will say that not only is this my favorite song on this album, but it's my f overall favorite song from Pantera. It's followed up with Good Friends and the Bottle of Pills. I don't have a whole lot to say about the song, but it is the shortest one on this album, with a runtime of 2 minutes and 52 seconds long. And after that, it's Hard Line Sucking Cheeks. And the song is in the realm of groove metal, and it's the longest song on the album at 7 minutes and 1 second long. The next song is Slaughtered. I read that Phil said that this song is about his distorted view of organized religion. I will say this is one of my favorite songs from this album. 
of Nexus 25 years. Read this was one of Pantera's most personal songs. And Phil wrote the song about, about his father and that he had a falling out with him. I know there's a lot of people who can relate to the song, including a personal friend of mine whose family is very dysfunctional. It's also the second longest song on the album at 6 minutes and 5 seconds long. Followed up with Shedding Skin. Phil said the song is about him in his 20s, and any girlfriend he had at the time had tried to tie him down. He said that he couldn't be in a relationship at that age. It's followed up with with Use My Third Arm. Phil said the song is about getting really pissed off. He even sounds like he's pissed off throughout the song. I can relate to the song since there's a lot of people and things that constantly piss me off. After that is Throws of Rejection. The song is more in the realm of groove metal, and it's a really good song. The album ends with Planet Caravan. It's actually a cover of a song by Black Sabbath. It's also the second single from the album, and the single was released in 94. Although I haven't heard the original version by Black Sabbath at the time of me making this review, I think this is a really good cover. And Pantera said they covered the song because they wanted to. The single actually has a B-side, which is a cover of The Bash by Poison Idea. This B-side ended up on the Japanese version of the album. You know, as you can see, it's not on my copy. However, the song did make it onto the soundtrack of The Crow, which I reviewed last year. I do enjoy the original version of The Badge, but I like Pantera's cover even more. March 24th, 94 was when a two-disc deluxe version of this album was released, in order to commemorate its 20th anniversary. This one has remastered versions of the songs, and Disc 2 is a live album that, that's Pantera's performance of the, at the 94 Monsters of Rock Festival. In order to promote this album, Pantera went on tour. June of 94 was when Phil Anselmo was charged with assault after striking a security guard who had tried to prevent fans from getting on the stage. He was released the following day on a $5,000 bail. Pantera later continued touring in the UK after, or touring, uh, before touring in America with Sepultura and Prong. Uh, November to December of 94 was when Pantera toured in Australia and New Zealand for the first time. May of 95 was when Phil appeared in court after, after assaulting that one security guard the year before. He pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 100 hours of community service. What I read is that this album uh, debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, and is later certified platinum by the RAAA by selling over one million copies. It was certified platinum in Canada by selling, uh, selling over 100,000 copies up there, and gold in the UK after selling 100,000 copies over there. What I read is that this album was met with mostly positive reviews from critics, and rightfully so. As for my opinion on it, I will say this is my personal favorite Pantera album. The stories behind the songs are very interesting, as well as the story behind the album. And I am considering this album for a future video on the top 10 best albums of the 90s. I know some people online will say that they think The Great Southern Trend Kill is the best Pantera album, but we all have our preferences. Speaking of which, I will be reviewing The Great Southern Trend Kill next week, so look out for that. Now is the part where I question you. Have you listened to Far Beyond Driven? If so, what are your thoughts on it? What's your favorite song from it? What do you think is more interesting, the album itself or the story behind it? Let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, be, sh be sure to hit the notification bell to notify future uploads. Thanks for watching, I'll be back soon with another review.